Three, two, one. What is crack a lacking, everybody? We're back for another episode of The Hype, episode number 35 coming at you. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, and we've got new releases in the store breaking today. Brand new Contenders Optic. We also have 2018 Donruss, which is chock full of Otani cards and parallels and chances at autos. And we're going to be lo- uh, joined by Eric from Hall of Fame BaseballCards.com from Arcadia, California. So that'll be a really cool interview. Uh, we're also going to talk some optic contenders, some NBA Supreme Hardcourt from Upper Deck that got slyly released. And we're going to start the topic off with Tops is for Sale, and we'll get into that. Dan, what's going on? You're back, dude. I'm back. I'm back. There's no still frame of me up on the uh, on the uh, old display there. So I know. You were, you were doing I'm, strep I'm, throat tre- test last week. I'm, uh, I'm here in person. Glad to be back. And uh, a lot of traveling the last uh, month, I would say. So, uh, yeah, good to get back in the routine, you know. How was the, uh, before we get into the tops thing, how was the industry summit, man? It was good. It was good. I think we were talking about it before. I uh, did the group break uh, panel, which was fun. Um, Nothing groundbreaking, kind of the same type of questions for the most part. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, see rad's doing your face yep for the most part it was uh the same questions same concerns but able to talk to some people that we don't usually talk to on a regular basis and uh just network and connect with people and uh kind of bs and have a good time you know so uh it was a well it was a well done it was the third industry convention the last one out of the three Mm mm-hmm uh, I don't know where I'd have to really sit down. I didn't go to the upper deck one, so I can't rank that one. But I would say it's a toss up. Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, it was good. Who I gets think, gold? I, I think I would have to give it to Tops based on the fact that a uh, little bit more interactive with the activities, going to the the batting cages and stuff like that. The uh, the spread. This every every spread at Tops was amazing. I think we talked about it before. Um, the we made a joke we've always had this because we doug and i have been to numerous about seven or eight industry summits and there's always that one day when they do lunch that it, it's a bag lunch it's like a prison lunch it's a bag lunch you, you get you get your turkey or roast beef or tuna in a in a brown bag and they stay true to it okay. uh they there keep was, it in nostalgic the monday monday was bag lunch day nice and uh i I was like, man, Doug is like super jealous right now. Yeah, I, he, I totally missed out that on that. he wasn't getting a bag of lunch, but well, I was eating my Korean beef bulgi. I wish I could have had a, uh, you know, sandwich. You know, I, I, I was, love that. I was actually going to uh, going to go live and stream it. Oh, okay. but I didn't want to. If you were live, like I didn't want to, you know, ruin the feed or anything like that. So. Last question about food before we talk about tops uh, for sale. Uh, how was the barbecue? Uh, you know, it, Texas is known for their barbecue. Oh, damn. I hear they sell it by the pound. Um, by the half pound. Yeah, you look we, like you we may went, have put on a few pounds. Oh, I did. No, <laughs> no doubt. Um, that's why I'm uh, I'm full. You're full vegan? Full, full <laughs> green right now. I'm going to go through a, a complete cleanse okay. uh, for the next, like, month or so. Uh, get all that, you know, saturated fat out of my system. Cause, uh, cause the, we went to 1050 barbecue and it's right near Dallas. 
and you basically order your meat by the half pound. And I had just a giant, probably, probably two and a half pounds of, of smoked meat. And uh, it was delicious. Nice. It, was, it was about eight of us, and it was the quietest any of us have been the whole the whole summit. <laughs> there was just like a coma no, going on. It was food just like coma. it was just like shoving just food in the face. It was uh it was pretty epic. So since you're doing your diet, you guys can send the Pachulia to uh twenty three ninety one Zanker Road attention Dan. Um I don't he'll know probably what... need some sandals and uh some incense as well uh for his new his new gig. Just got my beach cruiser out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, you can hang out in Santa Cruz and fit right in. You just 45 minute drive. But uh, Tops is for sale. This article came out on Monday. Um, they've been for sale. Uh, for those of you that follow the industry, I mean, any company is for sale at the right price. I mean, if somebody wants to make an offer on MojoBreak.com, I'm sure we'd listen. Uh, we always would consider it. But uh, this one kind of seems like it's more of a serious uh, alleged rumor that it, they could be for sale. So I wanted to discuss the possibilities. Uh, there's been some names that have been thrown around with this. And I think a few do make sense. Uh, let's face it. I mean, Tops has had probably their best couple years that they've had in the last 15, 20 years since Madis Madison Dearborn uh, bought them. So Madison Dearborn, I think, owns 75 percent. And I believe Eisner owns 25 percent. I could be totally wrong here as I haven't researched this a whole lot. But uh, those are the two you know, owners. And they have uh, these these amazing things called uh, uh, ring pops. Uh, so that's the other side of their business is they own bazooka candies which is uh, famous for the ring pop, the push pop, and uh, I guess the juicy drop, which I've seen my daughters eat. My daughter, my other daughter can't eat candy yet, uh, but I've seen them eat these, and I didn't know that the juicy drop was a Topps product. I mean, I, I, may, I may navigate more towards the juicy drop. I'll tell you what. You, you do realize that probably 75% of their revenue is based on their candy sales. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and I, I actually... I get a kick out of it because once in a while you'll go somewhere and they have ring pops. If you look on the package, it does say Tops Company. It does. So uh, that's a, that's a your daughter, thing. Your daughters eat ring pops? See, Red? No. No? That's probably not good for them. Um, my youngest daughter probably would eat it, but my oldest daughter, my wife, would never, like she didn't let her eat any kind of candy growing up. Yeah. So my youngest one got cavities and my old, older daughter. I was going to say, you know, it's <laughs> – uh, it's it's uh, not good on the teeth. I it's not eat, good on the teeth bill. Later I, on. however, used to eat those all the time. Yep. Every every corner store, liquor store I stopped by as a kid, I, I always bought a ring pop. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the good old uh, gum cigarette they used to have. I, I mean, it's it's a close second to the gum cigarette I used to buy from the uh, the ice cream man, where you'd you'd get the gum and you'd blow it and look like you're you're smoking and you're I don't, you're, you're five years old. I don't think they're gonna re-release those. No, they're not coming I, back I out. I don't think so. <laughs> But if Tops did release, like, we're coming out with candy cigarettes again, <laughs> I'd be like, game changer. <laughs> that was the last resort to get kids into the uh, tobacco game was the uh, the gum-powdered cigarettes that uh, they sold in. Well, I remember got, it was only through the Ice Cream Man, though. That now you, we couldn't, got, you couldn't get it in, like, Rite Aid or Lucky's or No, anything. no, no. But you now you have... Uh, you have like vape juice. It's like cotton candy flavored. So uh, yeah, but a kid can't go into a vape store and buy it. And then remember, they had uh, this really fine uh, chopped up beef jerky that came in like a like a chew tin. Mm -hmm. um, that oh had, yeah, the that, uh, the beef jerky, right? Beef jerky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it had that, a baseball card in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. That, that was basically telling kids like, hey, maybe you should think about chewing tobacco. Yeah, I, I, that's funny. I walked around with my, uh, my, my beef jerky in my back pocket, and I, and I was puffing on and my gum and cigarette. And your, can your candy cigarettes rolled up. In yeah, your yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder why I started smoking when I was twenty. I wonder why. So it was a well thought out process by Philip Morris. Maybe you needed a beach cruiser. Sound like you're a greaser. <laughs> I know, kind of. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I slick back hair, and everything. Um, but yeah, so the two players that are involved, fanatics, um, has been rumored. And I've also heard that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is also uh, rumored. Um, and that's courtesy of uh, Sports Card Radio, Sports Card News. Uh, Ryan uh, was uh, found the, a YouTube video of Gary Vaynerchuk about three weeks ago saying that he was too poor to collect baseball cards. Now he has the opportunity to buy the whole effing company. That's how he said it. So just obviously based on that video is where the speculation came, came to be. Um, but this dude's passionate. This would be a good, good fit, um, as as Ryan alludes to, and, and I advise you to. I haven't listened to it yet. I know they just came out with a new podcast. It's uh, at Sports Card News. You can find the link there, and uh, they talked about the sale. I'm gonna probably listen to that on the way home today, so I can 
you know, figure out what uh, is going on in this uh, uh, whole deal. But uh, this would probably be a good fit. This guy's super passionate. Uh, he's a good motivational speaker. He's been on Rogan. Um, he was the, the guy that started the wine YouTube that really took off, and he started selling wine out of his house and got to be a, a, a billionaire entrepreneur. So uh, this guy's interested in it. And then Fanatics is an interesting thing because – they are the, are the only one that can sell baseball cards, uh, sealed wax, on Amazon. So if you think if they purchase tops, what kind of cause and effect will that have on the hobby? Because they could, they're the only one. They have a, they're the only ones that could sell on Amazon. So they could, they could literally probably sell most of their stuff on Amazon. You know, you could get Gypsy Queen, uh, uh, you know, Amazon Prime. You know, you wouldn't have to go anywhere. So I, I mean, I, what do you think about that? I don't know, man. It's uh, I. In a perfect world, I think a better fit for us as a, as consumers would be would be, the the wine guy. What's his name? Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, that that dude. Um, but I think the smart money would be on fanatics. Yeah. Uh, they already have a deal with MLB. Again, they have that Amazon deal going on. Actually, go back to the fanatics slide. Um. They have everybody. I mean, they got I, they got it all. They got soccer, it all. they're working on. And probably. we've been talking about they are go, like I, we we've talked about it on the show. We've talked about it with with other people in private. They are going to get a license at some point. Yes. And wouldn't they buy tops and they have the baseball card license? Yeah, that's the foot in the door. And then they uh, well, that the, yeah, that that's NBA license. Yeah, that, I mean that's even. Getting, I, I mean, I think we could all say that the most valuable, the most valuable license in this industry is still the baseball card license. Yeah, yeah. I mean, baseball cards are the is the Coca Cola of it, soda. It's called it, they're when people refer to sports cards, they also refer to them as baseball cards. So, yeah. And uh, people were asking in the chat uh, how much is Tops worth. I think they they came out and said four four hundred eighty million. That was four thir- four thirty four thirty four thirty to four eighty, but that includes the candy. So, and if you say the candy is 60 to 70%, then you could kind of value the sports card portion of it around 200 million, 150, 200 million. So, but I don't think tops, tops, it doesn't sound like from what the article, if you, you could read that Bloomberg article, it's a good read. Um, I don't think that they're, they're trying to separate the two. So it sounds like if Fanatics bought it, they'd probably either sell the candy off. Same thing with maybe Gary Vaynerchuk, sell the candy off. I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of companies that do candy that would love to have those those three brands that sell in in you know major markets. So, um, but uh, yes, Fanatics has like I just uh, talked about has the Amazon exclusive. So if you're a seller, if you're like us, we can't sell anything uh, tops on Amazon or Panini or Panini now. So they've they've locked that up. So if they get a deal, I'm wondering what's going to cause to the local card stores to blow out to things like that, if they could literally just sell through everything through Amazon Prime because they could just stock all the pre-sales at Amazon in all the different locations and then everywhere around around the world can have it within a day. And they would 100% control the market. They price. would control the market, yeah. I mean, I don't think it'll affect breaks because I don't think Amazon's going to go out and do breaks, but um, it might be an interesting thing to follow in the next uh, few weeks and see if this is actually for real because this this, this has been rumored for a while and it's just always it's always a rumor. I mean, D- Madison Dearborn is a portfolio company. They have other companies that they they have to deal with. When something matures, like Tops is maybe kind of maturing at the moment. It's at its height. They they want to possibly sell it out and get into something else. Yeah, like I was saying. Right now, I don't think Tops, at least the card portion of the company, has never had a better value based on 2017 and a projected yes. 2018 value. So if they wait and go through 2018, sure, they can they can use their numbers for, for 17 and 18, right. but the projection for 19, who knows? There's an uncertainty. With Judge and Bellinger last year and then Otani coming into this year, Right now, if you're tops, this is probably the best time to cash out. Yeah. Yeah, if they're looking to. Um, and, you know, they're going to probably keep, I would assume, that they would they would pretty much keep the company the same way. They'd have all the, you know, they'd probably keep all the people on Let, staff. Hypothetically, if, if Fanatics did buy tops, they are not going to change the tops brand and call it Fanatics or right. tops by Fanatics. Or, right, right. They're going to, I mean – most people who are not even in the industry wouldn't even know that anything changed. Right, right. They're going to come out with the same brands, basically same price points, 
Um, the inner workings of the business will be completely different, but the the perception from the outside looking in would probably be no, no different from from just the end consumer. Right. I mean, the only thing it could it could change is the distribution of it. Like um, Ziggy says, they they don't want to destroy distribution, but if it's easier for them to sell something on Amazon on right away. Then I, you know, it's gonna it's gonna affect distributors now. Whether or not they decide to go half on Amazon and then just sell it at full retail, and then half to distributors and do wholesale and keep accounts like us, you know, around and allocation and stuff like that. That's what's gonna be interesting to see because the power that they have by using Amazon and being the only one on Amazon, they don't have to compete with anybody. Um, and then how does that affect blowout? I mean, does blowout have to? You know, blowout's going to have to go up and down based on if, you know, Fanatics is controlling Amazon and how fast they're being able to deliver product, things like that. So it's 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 going to be very interesting to uh, see if this does pan out the way that uh, the rumor is, is saying. So, I mean, yeah, very crazy, but uh, uh, definitely, you know, I'm an industry nut, so I've been, uh, you know, chewing popcorn, watching this all unfold and uh, trying to check on Twitter every day to see if there's anything new on it. I mean, I'm sure it's a long process, a long, lengthy process before anything gets announced, but... Uh, yeah, it'll be definitely kind of interesting. I don't think we would see anything actually happen until the end of the calendar year. Right, right. Yeah, and I don't think people really realize the... I think people out there that collect sports cards, that have been buying sports cards, that get into breaks, I think probably the perception is, is that the industry is worth a lot more than it is. It really isn't. I mean, I think each company isn't really worth as much as you think. That's why somebody was somebody was saying in the chat the other day, like, why doesn't why don't we see tops commercials during ESPN? Because they can't afford the price that ESPN is asking for, like Coca Cola, Dodge. Yeah, you can't you can't go buy Coca Cola for four hundred million dollars. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and those those ad spaces on those primetime sports networks, or during baseball games, like during the broadcast of a baseball game, it's one thing to advertise at the park. That's probably affordable. That's why you'll see National Baseball Card Day and stuff in the in the park. But as far as uh, you know, advertising on a major network, I don't. I don't think the budget is there for these companies. So, um, yeah. Anything else you want to say about the sale? You, are you going to make them offer? Uh, man, I I ain't got that long money. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. I'm I'm a little I'm a little short on that. Maybe what they, should, they. What about you? Uh, well, you know, they could put it on eBay. I'd drop some bids in. We should put tops on eBay, dude. That'd be awesome. I may be the high bidder on uh, maybe the first half an hour of the auction. <laughs> Shill bidder. Shill bidding. Um, but actually, there was – I know we uh, have that interview coming up, but there was a, actually an interesting question in the chat by Ziggy. I guess uh, National Treasures first off the line is going to get released tomorrow at eight, 8 o'clock – or 11 o'clock. For football. Football. Yeah. Um, and he was asking, is it – what, what do you think? Is it going to sell out? What's uh, what, what's your what's your pulse on that? Um, well, what is the parallel they're offering? I guess that that's going to be that's going to be. I haven't seen this yet. So while you're looking that up, I'll just give I, I'm going to I don't even care about the parallel. I'm just going to go with it. So. At least from our standpoint, we didn't get allocated or cut at all. Usually a pretty good indication that everybody got what they wanted. Uh, distributors, breakers, shops sub distributors everybody if that's the case unless they're offering something that is absolutely amazing um which i'm gonna say it's either gonna be a paralleled base card or a paralleled relic it's parallel rpa no it isn't yeah it's just one uh exclusive rpa per box out oh. of 13 oh oh mm. <laughs> <laughs> well uh you should just go buy it right now just run. Yeah, let's. Uh, the only just, reason just, I know that is because it popped just, up on my phone just now. Just, let's <laughs> let's get in a digital line right now. I'm standing. Uh, I'm best buying it. I don't know. Wow. Well, that, is that is that that's the number the 13 that they showed. Remember we saw that with the yep. Deshaun Watson. Yep. Okay, yep. that just that just yep. turned everything around. Yeah, yeah. Buy it. Buy it. It's gonna it's gonna go quick. Wait, no, don't. No, uh, it's gonna go quick. I so <laughs> I was saying before before we found that out. That was that was good radio. That was basically that was right. That was the cuff. that was in in the moment. In the moment. Um, don't, yeah, it's I, like, I was, I was concerned thinking that it was going to be similar to baseball, uh, where everybody got what they wanted and baseball first off the line still may be available. Right. NT baseball still may be there. I don't know. It's been there forever. I was thinking NT football may be the same, but if they're including one RPA per box, yes, per box, 
then at but it's an an RPA that's tied exclusively to just that version of the set. But so, it's still but it's still an RPA, and we don't know how many how the RPAs are going to fall on a case. Some years they've been one, some years they've been two. Uh, but if you can guarantee yourself in a box that you're going to get an RPA. It's going to go like hotcakes. Yeah, That's, I mean, Ziggy does make a good point, though. None of the football has sold out on day one on first of the line so far. They finally figured out. Uh, but but, what, people but what, is, what is the most collectible patch autograph every year? Well, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and you're looking, you're, you have a, what, one in 35 chance of getting – Mahomes or yeah, Hunt or true. it's all going to be rookie premier it's guys. It's going to be rookie premier guys. I mean, they may add like Ryan Switzer in there. I've seen him pop up in like um, uh, in case Mo- products, but most, yeah, most of the guys are going to be are going to be uh, rookie premier guys. Wow, that might be insane. That might be insane. Or it, yeah, it's. <laughs> so, I'm trying to process this right now to see where this is going to be. But man, they've got great momentum. I'm telling you. I mean, three months ago, football was in just the absolute dumps, and they came out with plates and patches. With and then they came out with limited. Uh, or vice versa, and then they came out with Select, and then they came out with Encase, and now Optic Contenders, and everything's been on fire. So we're leading up to this kind of a perfect storm from them. So yeah, I think it's going to sell out quick. So what you got? You guys say that the RPAs are numbered to thirteen. Thirteen stars and stripes. All right. Well, if there's thirty-five guys on a checklist, that means four hundred and fifty-five boxes. So they made like hundred and twenty cases, or four hundred fifty-five. Yeah, yeah, basically four, four box case. Yeah. So a hundred, about a hundred and fifteen cases. Huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah. If you got the cash, go for it. It's it's not a not a bad deal. It's gonna be what five probably. It's probably gonna be five hundred bucks. Probably five hundred bucks. Yeah, because it's usually yeah that's what they did for yeah it'll be five hundred bucks. Huh. Wow. Well, game changer. Game. Said, said it twice. Changer. I got I got one more game changer phrase in the in the in the show. So I'm gonna save it up though. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, wow. So, uh, who's who, who's buying it? Who who's who's going on there and buying it? So we'll see. So we're gonna bring Eric on here from Hall of Fame Baseball Cards from Arcadia, California. We usually don't like to have Dodger fans on, uh, but we made an exception because he's a super cool dude, and uh, we wanted to talk a little shop, talk a little bit about uh, they've been in business actually since '81. Shop opened in '91. So we want to talk a little uh, about uh, how things are going with them, what's hot in the shop, stuff like that. So. Uh, we'll uh, check it out here and uh, let me give him a call. If I can figure out how to work Skype. Uh, so what do you think, C Rad? Oh. Let's Dan try Eric to get now. some, dude. Let's try to get Hello. some. Hello. Hey, Eric, you're on the air with uh, Doug and Dan and Conrad from uh, The Hype. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm glad to have you on. Uh, you know, we, we met you, watched you do a great panel at the uh, Tops uh, Industry Summit. We loved your enthusiasm, and uh, we said, hey, we got to have you on the show. So uh, what's new with you, man? Uh, I was just um, currently at my shop. I was actually watching you guys on the show right now. Uh, I love the topic about the uh, Tops being for sale. Hey, what are you guys thinking about starting a GoFundMe? Hey, that's now that's that's a genius idea. That is a genius idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about that yesterday. I think we should uh, all come together, start a GoFundMe, and see if we can get uh, the, the people of America to pitch in to let us own tops. Hey, that'd be like the Green Bay Packers, right? We it'd all be owned by you know, like the fans and people that uh, love the hobby. <laughs> I got, I got, I got five on it. That's what. <laughs> that's what I got five on it too. <laughs> So uh, tell us about uh, recently. I know there's been some hot products that have came out, but what's been the hottest product at your shop uh, in the last couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, you know, Heritage been doing well. People are, you know, especially down here in L.A., people are chasing Otani. Yep. Um, so that's been selling pretty well. You know, uh, Top Series 1's been selling well still. Uh, Bowman Draft has kind of been continuing to sell. Nice. Uh, you know, predominantly the baseball products. Um, basketball wise, we've been getting a ton of requests for that Panini uh, Contenders basketball. Absolutely. Um, which is like a million, uh, like a million dollars a box to get more on wholesale now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, um, but yeah, those are kind of probably the top ones right now. We're you know we're a baseball card store, so we're, you know most of our business is uh, from baseball cards. Nice. We do sell. Uh, we do sell basketball and, and, and uh, football and hockey, 
Um, uh, but predominantly our business is mostly baseball card sales. Nice. Sounds good. Yeah, that, that Heritage yeah. has been a great product. Have you guys pulled any Otanis or even seen any of the short prints yet? No, we haven't gotten to open up a ton. Uh, we don't do a lot of case breaks yet, trying to get into that. So we don't get to open or see a lot of product open um, unless maybe customers open up boxes in here. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of customers like to open up their boxes in the comfort of their own home and stuff like that. But uh, usually I tell people to let me know if you get a big hit, you know, text me or tag us in an Instagram photo or something like that. So we try to keep our pulse on Right. What's coming out of our shop if if we can? Is there any of those products that you're like, hey, can I can can you like open this because I want to see it? Like you know, like maybe like a new flawless release or maybe like a new Topps Chrome or something like that. Has there been any of those that you're like, hey, can you please open this up because I want to see it? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes, and I'll even maybe occasionally uh, say, you know, how about you open up the box here? You know, I'll give you a few bucks off. Let me film it for our YouTube channel or something like that. Just. So I can see it, so we can, you know, get some more content for our channel, uh, get some more information on the product, you know. Um, occasionally, I might open up a box for myself, but very, very rarely. Right. Um, what's the um, strangest request you've ever gotten in your shop? strangest request i've ever gotten like a product request or just yeah or can just... you can you get me like a 1990 jose uribe or you know something like that you were just like whoa that's <laughs> that's the oddest question i've ever had uh, i mean i nothing comes to mind really i mean we're always you know getting requests for just oddball random stuff you know random singles um, all that kind of stuff and usually you know a lot of times you know we're a very small store yeah. So we can't, we, we don't have everything that everybody wants at any moment of the day. So a lot of times the requests are super random and we can't <laughs> uh, fulfill those. You know, we stock a lot of the local teams, the, the Dodgers, the Angels, the Rams, some of the bigger historical names, you know, nice. you know the Mantles and the Willie Mazes and stuff like that. But uh, aside from that, you know, we don't have... Uh, you know, the 1990 Jose Uribe card number 13 or whatever, right, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. We just don't have the room to store all those commons, you know. Well, I, I think with the, the mass, massive amounts of cards in this whole hobby, I don't think even if you had a 100,000 square foot shop, you'd be able to carry everything anyway. So that everybody would request. Right? I agree. <laughs> so Yeah, exactly. Um, so you guys uh, officially 81 and then the shop opened in 91. Um, so what would, what would what you see would be the, you know, difference in, in how people buy nowadays compared to, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Well, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, the product was completely different than it is today. Um, so I think the way the product has evolved and we all, most of us know how the product has evolved. It, it you know, it's including all those, the autographs and the relics and the hits like that, you know, it's, you see a lot more collectors that are quote unquote gambling with the products now. Right, right. Um, whereas back, you know, 20 years ago, you were collecting because you loved the cards. You wanted to put the sets together. You wanted to collect your favorite player. You know, there might've been some value based on demand for a rookie card back then. Nowadays, there's a lot more like instant value. It's almost like a, a lottery scratcher where you can buy a pack. You can get really lucky with one pack. You can buy a box or a case. You can get really lucky. You can get some big Otani autograph or some mantle cut signature or something crazy, some Babe Ruth baseball bat knob. You know, um, you can get super lucky and have some really collectible stuff. You can get something that's valuable. Uh, keep it for your own collection or, like I said, pawn it, put a little money in your pocket or reinvest, whatever. So uh, to answer your question, you know, collectors have changed because there's a lot more people, I think, playing the gamble a little bit right now. Right. Definitely. And so you guys opened up in 1991. That's actually one of the first years I built my set. I'm assuming you guys probably a hot seller back in 91 when it Stadium Club Baseball probably had to have been pretty hot. <laughs> stadium Club. Yeah, I love Stadium Club. That was a that was a good seller. We still have a box of Stadium Club uh, 1991 nice. on the shelf right now. That's actually one of my favorites favorite products of all time i've always loved the stadium club uh, the photography and the just the, the simplistic design the sharp corners and stuff like that just a cool set absolutely yeah so and then yeah. so so 81 is when uh your dad basically started you know kind of doing like a mail order thing right and then 
So did he have cards? Absolutely. From what I from what I read on the bio, did he, so he kept his cards when he was a kid. So was he able to basically kind of finance that into a shop, basically? Like a sell little some bit, of his yeah. Cards off? Yeah, a little bit, you know. And, and some of the cards that uh, some of the like the vintage singles from the fifties and sixties that we still have in here are part of some of my dad's original oh, that's collection. Awesome. That's you awesome. Know? Yeah. And then like, like you already read, you know, he did, uh, 1981, he decided to start, um, buying direct from tops, Donruss and Fleer back in 81. He would buy by the case, a ton of products. It was cheap back in those years. Yeah. Um, he buy a ton of cases. He started doing, doing business through the mail, mail, mail orders, um, local business on the weekends. He might have, uh, customers and people, you know, come down the driveway and, and, uh, he would set up the garage to be like a little sales area, you know. That's that's. Um, yeah, no, it was just a little quaint, little uh, out of the home business, um, and did that for about ten years until we started renting uh, where we are now at our storefront um, on Foothill and Arcadia, and and uh, we've been at the storefront since '91, um, and still still here. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, what keeps you guys going every day? I, I mean, is it the product? Is it the customers? Is it the close knit community? Uh, beer? Can I say that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. There's no sensor, no filters uh, no. here. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No. All, all jokes aside, it is. Uh, it is all those things. You know, not only beer, but the products. Um, we love what Tops is putting out. Um, and Panini as well, uh, Upper Deck, all the companies are putting out some great cards right now. Um, definitely the community is probably the one of the main things that keeps keeps me coming to the shop every day. Um, just the opportunities to interact with the people that come into the shop, not only physically, but been meeting some great people through social media and a lot of supporters of us through social media. Um, you know, the grace of God, really. Yeah. A lot of those dark years. <laughs> Right. A lot of the dark years, the late nineties, you know, how, how we were able to stay open and keep our doors open. Um, it's beyond me, yeah, it's, but, but we're still here and happy to be here and happy to see the, kind of the hobby on the rise again. Um, we've seen a lot of ups and downs in the last 37 years we've been in business, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, happy to still be here. Yeah. Navigating to, a lot of credit to you guys navigating that junk wax era in the, in the nineties, right after, you know, probably right after 91 stadium club, really where it fell off until probably what, Ichiro in 2001 is where it kind of started picking back up or yeah yeah I'd say that probably those early early to mid 2000s you know and then definitely probably uh 2011 with Trout yeah. started really seeing an, another major incline um but yeah you know I mean I, I mean a lot of credit to my dad Bob Newton you know who's pretty pretty solid businessman who was able to keep keep our doors open through through that period right Definitely. Well, I see the passion in you, yeah. and I'm sure I haven't met you. I may have met your dad over the years if he's been at the summit, but I'm sure he has the same kind of passion. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. that's probably what translates, and customers see that, and that's what makes them want to keep coming back. So, so credit to yeah. you guys, and you guys got an awesome logo. I want to buy one. Of, I'm going to buy one of those shirts, man, because that's I love the logo. <laughs> I love the shirt that you you were wearing. I see on your site as well. So. It's a cool logo. Well, I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to send you one. Just shoot shoot me your address after we're done. Awesome, man! I'll wear it on the show and uh, while we're live for sure. Um, and you can get those uh, if you guys like the. You can see it on our screen now if you like the uh, shirt. Hofbc.com is how you can uh, find the site. And uh, nice. I like I like how you have a really. I've always been a fan of a short web address. That makes it real easy to remember. <laughs> you know, some guys have like thirty eight letters. Uh, you know, it's like yeah. uh, uh, landmark sports cards. Blah 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 blah. And you're like, man, I'm never gonna remember that. So hofbc yeah. is uh, super easy to remember. So. Um, you know, but, uh, I noticed you guys were next to a, a music shop. I don't know. Uh, in the picture I seen, uh, has, has there been some sour, <laughs> has there been some sour notes coming from there or has it been a good soundtrack? <laughs> has it been a good soundtrack to big pulls in the store? Uh, no, no, they're, they're all right. Um, it's kind of, kind of cool that there's me. I'm actually a musician myself too. Nice. I've been playing music. I've been playing music my whole life. So to have uh, a music school kind of move in next door, I think they moved in about a year or two ago. Uh, it's been all right, you know, a couple sour notes on occasion, but, uh, typically, <laughs> um, yeah, typically it's been okay. Sweet. So what, uh, yeah. what instrument do you play? Uh, my, my, uh, main instrument's guitar. Um, I've always played acoustics or electrics. I've been in bands most of my life. Nice. Um, I can also play, I can also play drums, bass. I'm a singer. Nice. Uh, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. 
<laughs> nice. That's kind of like Dan. We were actually were in a band, uh, original bands and cover bands as well. So and I think we may have found a third possible member to the sports card band. I think so. So I think I, I think okay. we, uh, we'll have to do some shows at the <laughs> national or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> what's your uh, on the music tip? What's your favorite band? Favorite band of all time? Uh, or it could be a couple, uh, couple bands if you can't pick one. I mean. You know, I grew up uh, kind of with uh, listening to classic rock, digging through my parents' record collection. So I got into the Beatles, Hendrix, Zeppelin, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, when I was in the 90s or whatever, I got into, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and uh, Foo Fighters is probably one of my favorite current bands. Nice. Um, I, I love a lot of jazz, you know, I'm a big, um, big listener of jazz. Vince Guaraldi and Jimmy Smith, the organ the organist, uh, you know, a variety of things. Nice. Anything good. Nice. That's awesome. That's good to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and you're a Dodger yeah. fan. How many Dodger games have you been to in your whole life? If you had to put a number on it. <laughs> well, I was thinking about that. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, we had season tickets. We had some pretty good season tickets uh, for about 25 years of my life. Um and I was probably going to a lot more games back then. In the last 10 or 15 years, I probably only get to go, you know, half a dozen games a year at the most, I would say. Um, it's based on my schedule and affordability and stuff like that. So, and traffic, lifetime, traffic, I'm sure. Yeah, traffic. It's okay. We're not too far outside of Dodger Stadium. You know, we're only about 25 minutes, oh, 30 nice. minutes out. So, so it's not too bad. It can usually slip in there pretty quick. But, um at lifetime, I'd say you know, well over a hundred games. I don't know. Nice. nice. Um, what What about you guys? Is that how does that compare on par with uh, you guys? You know, uh, Gi- Giants fans. I'm assuming. Probably about or the same. We had it, season, we had season tickets one year in 2009, and then we didn't give we didn't renew in 2010 like dummies. And uh, yeah, so probably yeah. overall about a uh, hundred. Now I have two kids, and uh, you know, like you, working all the time, and so it's definitely been a little right. bit a little tough to uh, make it to Giants games. <laughs> Uh, Dodger dogs. Right. Dodger dogs. Do they live up to the hype? I, that's all I hear about. I haven't had one. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, you, you you eat them because you love the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they're just uh, I, you got to go. I have to go and have to have a Dodger dog anymore. Really, I, I do. You know, it's just a nice smoky. There's not much to look at. I'll be honest. But uh, they always taste great, and they just kind of bring back the nostalgia of being at the park and stuff like that. It's just, you know, a couple dogs, a couple beers, you're right in the pocket. You're enjoying life. Heck, yeah, man. Well, I got a few, a few yeah. uh, quick, quick rapid fire uh, where I'm just going to give you two options. You're going to pick one. So I'll start with Hershey, okay. Hershizer or Valenzuela. Ooh, uh, Hershizer. Can I tell you why? I know you're doing rapid fire, but Hershizer. No, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was one of the first like uh, pro sports guys to visit our store one wow. night back in like ninety one. That's awesome. My dad was closing up. My dad was closing up shop. He gets a knock on the window. We're all closed inside. He comes to the front window. There's Hershiser. Wow. He let them in. The guy, the guy dropped like a thousand dollars. You know, this was back in ninety one, ninety two. You know. Yeah. Um, hung around, chatted with my dad, and bought some stuff for his man cave, and kind of a cool story. So That's gotta go awesome. Hershiser. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, I would for that reason too. Uh, Kirk Gibson or Mike Piazza? <laughs> Gibber. Got to go Gibber. Got it. I Based mean, on that Ace on. World Series, right? Not not only did he pull the ripcord around the bases, but he had that sweet mustache. Oh, yeah. It's, it has an epic mustache. I wish I could grow one like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my uh, one of our good friends is an Ace fan, and we never let that one go. Every time we see him, we you know we do the ripcord. So. <laughs> I, I bet. <laughs> uh, Harper or Trout? Trout. Love Mike Trout, man. That guy is a solid dude on and off the field. He's a great player. He's always smiling, you know. Yeah. Uh, Got to go Trout all the way. Well, hopefully with the Otani and uh, Mayton and, you know, maybe they'll uh, they'll, they'll get Trout uh, to, to win a ring here. So. <laughs> I, ho- I hope so. I hope they start making their way up to the top, man. It would be great to see the Angels back on top again. Absolutely. It would be fun as much as it pained me to see, but to see like, like we had the battle of the Bay in 89, but in a, an LA series would be kind of, kind of interesting to see how that would pan out. That'd be fun yeah. to watch. Uh, ju- I agree. Judge or Stanton. Ooh. Um, 
That's a tough one. Um, I'm going to say Judge. Nice. I'm going to say Judge. Nice. Um, why? Just because I like him, really. <laughs> Not that I dislike Stanton or anything. Um, but, uh, man, he's he's meant so much to our hobby. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, in the last year. Um, and he's a fun guy to watch. He's another very charismatic guy. He's got a, a very, uh, he's got that look, you know, with his, uh, his, uh, his grin, you know, with his teeth kind of split in the middle there. And, um, he's a big dude. He's fun to watch, personable. Um, not that Stanton's not any of those things, but, uh, off the top of my head, rapid fire, I'm just going judge. I agree. I think he's a little bit more, I think Stanton's more closed off. I think judge has been more accepting to fans, media, tops, things like that. So. Um, it'll be interesting to it'll be interesting to see the interaction uh, with the two of them right next to the lineup and on the same team this year. See how they play off each other a little bit. Yeah. Well, what are you thinking? Uh, over or under 104 home runs combined. Over. Over. I agree. Yeah. Dan doesn't agree quite, yeah. but uh, I think it's going to be over. I think we're looking at more like 112. That'd be uh, that'd be a lot of bombs. <laughs> It's going to be good for baseball cards for sure. Uh, here's, here's, a, so. here's a music question. Motley Crue or Metallica? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to go with Metallica. Nice. I like yeah. it. Got to go, gotta go with Metallica. They were one of my first like heavy metal favorites back in the day. Heck yeah. Um, though, though I do love Tommy Lee on the kit, man. He's yeah. a solid <laughs> Oh, drummer, you know, rock, straight ahead rock drummer. But I'm going to go with Metallica. They're always one of my favorites since about high school. Nice. And uh, least favorite team out of Giants, Diamondbacks, Padres, and Rockies? Giants, Diamondbacks, Padres, and Rockies? Well, sorry, guys. You know I'm a Dodgers <laughs> fan. Uh, so you know the answer to that one. I knew it was going to be. I was like, there's no other rivalry there. It's going to have to be the Giants on that answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, there's very there are very few teams that I hate. Probably no teams that I hate, but I do hate the Giants. Um, <laughs> not in a bad way, just in a rivalry type hatred. Yep. Yeah, you got to have that rivalry. I mean, you you got to look yeah. forward to rooting against a team, or else it's just you know it just makes baseball more fun to watch. So, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, hopefully yeah. the rivalry is restored this year because we were a, we were a sad display last year. So hopefully there's some good uh, Giant <laughs> Dodger games this year with our 2010 All-Star team that we've established with uh, McCutcheon and, and Longoria. So Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't wait to see how those guys perform for the Giants. It'll, it'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I wanted you to prom uh, promote your social media outlets. We've got your uh, HOFBC.com. Uh, tell everybody how they can find you on Instagram and Twitter as well. Instagram, we're doing a lot of cool stuff with our Instagram page right now at Hall of Fame Baseball Cards. Um, maybe I should shorten that to HOFBC.com too, but for now it's Instagram <laughs> at Hall of Fame Baseball Cards. Uh, of course, YouTube, Hall of Fame Baseball Cards, Twitter, HOF Baseball Card. Um, what else? Pretty much anywhere else, you know, Reddit, uh, Snapchat, anywhere else you can mess around on social media. We're doing a little bit of something, so. You can find us almost anywhere. Awesome, man. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. We'll have to have you come on again, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you at some uh, of the upcoming events, and you know, we'll be able to talk some more shop, man. I hope so, too, man. It's been a blast. Thanks for having me on, guys. No problem, man. Thanks again, and uh, we'll talk at you later, man. Sounds good. Shoot me your address for that for that T-shirt, Absolutely, bro. yep. As soon as we're off the air, I'll go ahead and shoot you one. <laughs> right on. All take right, care, sounds fellas. good. All right, take care. Peace. Oh, that was fun. That was some good stuff right there. Absolutely. Some Got a, good stuff. Definitely. Eric, good interview. And, uh, you know, I've always been a big supporter of, of, you know, guys that are enthusiastic and passionate. And that was one of the main reasons I wanted to have him on after watching him on stage, you know, at the panel. He had some great ideas. And uh, I could tell he was very passionate about his business, uh, just like we are. And I wanted to bring him in. So um, if there's any other suggestions for guests, guys, we'd love to hear it. You know, um, I'm sure 35 episodes in, you're probably tired of hearing our voices all the time. So it's always good to have another fresh perspective in on um, these topics and uh, stuff like that. So uh, shoot us a, a, a either at Mojo Break underscore com on Twitter or through our email. I'd like Lonzo Ball. OK, yeah, well, that's, it's, that, yeah, that's that, C-Rad's homie. So he might be able to work that out. I think that would be a good show. <laughs> Lonzo Ball. <laughs> He, well, we could probably get him to talk about Migos or something. He'd be he'd be all about coming on, you know. 
I can't even do that, dude. Can you do that, C-Rad? The when me goes boop boop. No, I want I want the whole I want an Wait, what, episode what, what of Ball and the Family on the show. I want the whole family. <laughs> what the sound is family? that, dude? The whole what family. sound did you just do? They uh I can't do it. But uh I've been listening to some some modern rap, you know, which I know is probably going against anybody that collects baseball cards, but uh, like I think it's Quavo and uh, the guys from Migos, and they do that. Boop, and they do that, and that's what Lonzo listens to. It's his favorite band. He listens to <laughs> Amigos, Migos, just Migos. Not no uh, A, no uh, no, no, just Migos, just Migos. So he's a big hmm. fan. So was that on purpose, or they just shortened it because that's hip with the kids it's hip. now? It's hip with the kids. You don't want to be um, Amigos like friends. No, just, just Migos, just Migos. It's too hard to say the A, so you got to cut the A off. So. What up, Migos? All right, well, we'll contact uh, we'll contact Lavar. We'll say, hey, we Levar, bought your shoes. Lavar, Lonzo, uh, Lamelo, talk about the uh, wh- where where are they playing? Where what, what's how how are they doing? We actually have not. Oh, Lith- talked. Lithuania. I don't know, yeah, man. We, dude, would we did we all forget and give up? We're just like I whatever. So. I think so. I mean, that was You're that was a yourself. hot that was hot topic for like what seven episodes. We kept on talking about what what what's Lamelo and Leangelo doing. <laughs> Cheerleader gotta, special gotta, guest on camera. You gotta really <laughs> love the uh, um, the ball family if you're watching those Lithuania basketball matches. Oh yeah, you gotta be a or you have a lot invested in maybe something of theirs, right? Like shoes, <laughs> like maybe shoes. <laughs> I remember. You, I mean, Lonzo's already in the in, NBA, so you can't really invest well, in either. No, yet. I think I think we need to get the. Uh, doesn't Lamelo have some shoes? He does. Let's get. We some gotta Lam- get him next to him. Yeah, we gotta get the Lamellos. The Lamellos. Isn't it the the Z or it's not the Z, but. Is it Z01 or something like uh, that? No, I don't know. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> mellow, mellow too. Well, Contenders Optic dropped today, and the stuff is in fuego already. It's gone up to the price that I can't even believe. And uh, like last week, we talked about Shiny, how we all just love Shiny. Well, this fits right in that demographic. We've got Shininess coming out of these boxes. As you can see, they've got some reprints. They've got the gold vinyl look. Contenders design, shiny equals success. At least early on, we'll have to see what these cards sell for. But I wanted to open a discussion to not only the people in the chat, but you two as well. Where does this rank now? So you got three sets. You've got Contenders regular, you've got Optic regular, and now you have Contenders optic. Does this replace one of those as far as the terms of collectability? Well, would you want a regular optic card? Or would you want an Optic Contenders card? I would want an Optic Contenders. Me too. Okay. Well, how about would you want a Contenders card or a Contenders Optic card? You know, I would pr- I would prefer because you would get five, maybe six autos in a box of Contenders at the price point that Optic Contenders is at right now. Or Contenders Optic. What the hell is it? Who is knows? it Contenders Optic There's or no Optic wrong Contenders? Way. There's no wrong way to say it. There's no wrong way to say it. And then on but the back of the cards it says Prism, which is even crazier. I, I would prefer... I, I got to see what it's going to do on the secondary market, but I, for my money, I would rather bust a box of contenders just because you get more content. Um, and then you just throw away the base cards too. Yeah, but you get five autos. Yeah. What do you think, C Red? I think at this point, um, obviously, I haven't seen any yet. It's just you guys that busted this morning. But from what I've seen, I think it's time probably to get rid of regular optic. Dude, it was only and, it was only around for like a couple of years. Yeah, it, it, you got <laughs> like it, you didn't even get a chance to breathe. See ya, bye, 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 Felicia. Um, <laughs> Look, get, man, get, we're not we're not in the business of taking away <laughs> like products, dude. We need more. No, get, get get optic out because then you have you have contenders, which is the staple every single year. Now you have the Chrome version of it, right? And it, right. it, it falls right in line to what. Tops was doing before, so uh, so optic, like series optic. one and then Chrome basically. Now what they what they can do is do a choice and do a regular hobby version of Optic Contenders instead of Optic. We're keeping the base, dude. We're not we're not we're not getting rid of the base. It's uh well, it's interesting because there's value. There seems like there's been value for all the releases, so maybe there is room for all three of them. But I'm just wondering, five years from now, Mitch Trubisky, this gentleman on the screen, is a uh, Pro Bowler and he's winning games, going playoff games. He it's in he ranks in the top five i'm saying theoretically i don't think it's gonna gonna, happen gonna be tough in the nfc with jared goff well i'm just saying so you know you got the national treasures rpa which is probably the consensus number one overall at least the highest selling right and then probably the contenders after that right Uh, the only thing i can see i'm talking about like the top five cards that you'd want of a guy so is his optic contenders third now does it just jump right into third um, and then where does uh, Donner's Optic rank? Is that 
fifth now? I mean, C-Rad so, got rid saying? of it. He Pro- got rid of it. Probably too it's early gone. to say for optic contender. Yeah, you got to wait and see. Yeah, yeah we, let, let's wait to see what happens on the secondary market. Let's see how the consumer reacts to it. You know it. what should be the I, number one RPA in football? Go, off, off, go ahead, finish your thought, Dan. Spectra? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Certified um, cuts? Uh, am I still talking? Or yeah, 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 go, ahead, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Dude, yeah, I mess you up, my you bad, dude. Me. <laughs> I went off on a whole other tangent. You guys are killing me. What were you talking about? The number one selling RPA? No, uh, no. I well, that's what C-Rad was talking about. Yeah, I was talking. About, I was getting ready to say that what makes this different that I like about it is that it's a fifty-five point card. Oh, okay. That that is what really separates it from regular contenders. Now, I don't know if that. I don't know if everybody's gonna feel that way. Yeah, I think the card stocks better too. I like thicker things as well it's premium so it's premium premium and it's shiny it's premium um the base cards look nice i mean i want to keep the base cards you know i don't want to i don't want to throw them away like yeah, regular there's contenders. something that you actually want to collect those even because yeah, there's base only cards. there's two of them yeah yeah there, there's there's not many of them special. so special they want to hold on to them yeah yeah absolutely so i it's just interesting um but this is the first year of it i could see it not you know they're gonna this one's gonna be good um, but not every year is it going to be good. You well, know what I'm saying? Well, it's going to be over-ordered next so, year. So next year, let, let's say hypothetically there was 1,500 cases that were pre-ordered from Panini. Uh, obviously, it's gone way up. I don't know how much of this stuff they made. Next year, pre-orders are going to be like 10,000. Yeah. 10,000 cases. Right. So they're obviously going to make more. They're going to have to to keep up with the demand. Mm-hmm. So whatever they made this year, go ahead and double it next year. Probably. Probably. First off the line, I'll probably hit that, too. For, first off the line, um, they'll have a different parallel. The, the Right now, are we looking at it? Is, it? is it good because it was produced on a minimal level? Or is it good because people love the content? Um, I think people love the content initially. Um, and the, the hits are coming out. So I think... What you said, like what you say, if ten thousand cases come in and you get like just one guy in a case that's we, good, then then it's not good. We we were around in in two thousand fourteen. Tops Chrome was a prime example. Uh, every distributor yep. was like, "You need to order this." It was Johnny Manziel's like rookie year. Everybody ordered thirty forty cases. Mm-hmm. Everybody got their allocation. Everybody got it. You would pull a rookie premier guy. Once a, one in a case, yeah. Um, you would pull like five Henry Josies. Yep, you would get nobody. You would get nobody. That stuff was readily available. It tanked to like twenty five dollars a box at one point. From like sixty or now. 70. Now it's up to a hundred dollars a box, which is a re- is a terrible value because the chance. I think it's eighty. I think the, it's eighty. Yeah, but still, the chances of pulling a Garoppolo rookie. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Even though he wasn't a top guy back then. It, yeah, but you would get one on on average. There's a bunch of sticker out of on average. You would get guys. like one rookie premier guy. He was a rookie premier guy, but you'd get one of those guys per case. I think we opened like 40 cases and we didn't pull one Manzel auto in 40 cases. Yeah, I think we, I think we like we barely got Bortles like maybe once. I think we got a I think we got a uh, Odell, but it was before he broke out. Right. So are yeah. we saying enjoy enjoy this now because eventually it's going to get watered down? I mean, I hope they learn from the mistakes and not do that. Um, I think, if anything, they're going to make more variations so that there's, you know, looks like it's short printed, but it's there's 15 variations of Trubisky 101s. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But is it, so is it too early? Let me ask you guys this. Is it too early? And we'll move on from Contenders Optic here after this. Is it too early to say this is a staple to football card collecting? Nope, I think I figured it out. Get rid of Optic. Uh, optic no, contender slides not, right in. Not going to happen. There's no way that Panini will get rid of Optic. Optic would have to tank for five, six, seven years before they get they're, they're still <laughs> They're still doing totally certified. Yeah. They, they didn't do contenders in basketball for four years. True. And now it's they made it really good. Well, I'll tell you right now, 100%, they're going to come out with Optic next year with next year's draft. I'm going to tell you one. There, of, one there, of, ain't, there ain't no products that are going to get cut. In my opinion, I think one of these Prism Optic products is not going to come out next year. Optic NT, dude. 
<laughs> you laugh. You no, think, I'm serious. You think, yeah. it, you think it's funny. Yeah. You think it's funny. Funny ha ha. You think it's funny. Optic totally certified. <laughs> oh, God. Optic absolutely. Could you imagine, like, an, an NT set, like, uh, 180 point cards that optic. are sh- just all acetate and shiny. Optic, optic. Yeah, it's it actually has the <laughs> optic, optic. It, ha- it has the optic chrome technology on the back of the card. <laughs> I mean, you got it. You got to have the double optic, right? Double optics, man. There's so many things when, they can do. When can they just call it optic chrome? They can't. I don't think they can use chrome. Dang. I think. I think. I think that's part of the $430 evaluation for tops. I think they own the word chrome. Yeah, they can't use it. Um, let's crossbreed two sets. Let's go. So this is a crossbreed. Let let's let's come up with on the fly, uh, and it could be anything. It could be any sport. It could be tops. Uh, crossbreed two sets on the fly. Um, uh, we're in a boardroom. No, we're making but, a new. No, product. no, 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 no. But I, I, I want it to. I don't want it to be stupid. You want it. To, you want it to be successful. <laughs> I want it to be successful. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna say nobody goes into a boardroom and goes, "Hey, let's make the shittiest product we can," but it's debatable sometimes. It is. Um, uh, man, I, well, I just said optic, optic NT, but let's go, uh, let's go dynasty chrome. Okay. So a chromed over dynasty card encased one card. And there would be a super fractor. There would be a super fractor. Oh, that might mm. be kind of, mm, yeah. So, but yeah, that's, it's going to be done now. Hmm. I like that. See, Rad, do you have anything? Yeah, I'm still thinking of mine, dude. I can't. You said we could go across companies. Yeah, right? you could. You could do like let's. You could take Panini and put it in a Topps product. Right. Just crossbreed. I'm going. I'm going flawless, definitive. Ooh. Okay. All right. And it, and it's gonna be diamonds and definitive cards. Yeah. Like in the patch. <laughs> <laughs> like. And they got they got stickers that that tell you where the diamond comes from. Like the the patches. Like, like what jewelry store? <laughs> they, got, they got the certification Jared This is from Jared's Galleria it's From the Shane Co I'm going with Alright I got a, I got mine Eminence Hoops We're going so, We're going so I, We're going We're going All in a great big box And there's 200 cards And they're all 360 point And they're all hoops <laughs> They're numbered to 10 That's how you get fired right there <laughs> and uh, we got NT Revolutions in in the uh, in the chat. We have Immaculate Treasures, uh, NBA Contender, uh, Unparalleled Phoenix. You may just have to uh, wear like a welder's mask for that set. Then it's too shiny. You just have to put a whole welding. Everybody, mask everybody on. loves shiny things, but if you put those two products together, it's too shiny. Too we've shiny. Gone, we've gone too far. We've gone way too far. All right, let's move on to uh, Shohei Otani. Uh, uh, you know, this is the ten, tenth show in a row where we've talked about him, so we got to keep it going. Um, Damn. Yep. This was a recent sale with bids. So uh, the number to sixty nine red ink auto, forty eight hundo, sixty two bids. I wonder if it got paid, but that's pretty crazy. Damn. Would you pay five grand for that card? No. No. Would you guys in the chat pay five grand? Is there upside to that card? That's that's you can give very little room for upside at five grand. I mean that's crazy, but that just shows you how much hype this guy has. So I wanted to give an update on those heritage prices that we talked about last week. I I think I would be, I'd be more into. I think that's you got to remember how many products are going to come out this year. I I think that card's worth like twenty four hundred dollars. I think I think we're about. I think it's. I think somebody basically overpaid by. All right, Dan's pulling money out of his his own account. If you guys have one for twenty four hundred, he says he's buying. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, no brainer. Kelps is contenders encased. That's kind of interesting. All right, already graded. I like that. That's that might be the winning idea right there. I like that one. Um, so Donruss came out, and we've got more Otani. So we've got the second product with a possible Otani autograph in it, and we busted some this morning. We didn't pull any Otani autos. Uh, lots of cards. We actually dual cammed it midway through or midway through the second box but um initially you can see there's some otani already on ebay so this is a gold number to 10 somebody trying to get 3500 um honestly not as appealing um as the heritage for me um but uh you know we got more otani and kind of what dan already alluded to is is at some point we're going to have too much otani this year yes and uh we're at the mercy of if he's going to perform. If he performs, we're never going to say we have too much Otani. 
But if he is hitting like 230, not really pitching that well, we're going to be saying, oh, we have too much Otani. Yeah. There, was, there was too I much mean, no, judge it, at some it, point it, last year. But, but, yeah. he, but he will carry the products for the next like six months, no doubt. Until the All-Star break is where we're going to see people – the mark the market is either going to stabilize and go up a little bit on Otani or it's going to start gradually coming down with every release. So does he and we talked about this during the first break. Um, Gavin contributed to the chat and uh, had a pretty good question. Um, how long can he suck? How long does he have to suck? All star break. All star break. All star break. Yeah. OK. I think it's, it could be a full year. No, I, I think the all star break um, because you I mean, what if he what if he's in the home run derby? We, we saw what. Well, first off, we saw what that did to Aaron Judge's cards last year. Yeah. That home run derby, his cards went up like 20% the next day. But his swing got all messed up. Right. So it actually affected his value in the last like couple months. A yep. couple couple months of the season, you were getting Aaron Judge cards at even the 13 Bowman draft. You were getting them for about two to $300 less than yep. what they were selling for. Before and at the All Star, yeah, he tanked. Uh, he tanked a little bit. I have a question: Does the international market have a part to play in this for this guy? Does he have a little bit more time? Is what I'm asking because yes, of the international. I, market. I think so, 100. Because you I, think of somebody like Jeremy Lin, like we always bring this up, Jeremy Lin with basketball. His fans will still pay a premium for his good cards. Mm-hmm. Um, compared, like you know, he's obviously like um, a good role player, Jeremy Lin, maybe like a serviceable starter in the league. But he people pay will pay for his good cards as if he was still an all star type level type player. Yeah, I, that's why I think he has a full year because he's also young too. He's twenty two, so I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to still believe in him for a while. Now, uh, for forty eight hundred dollars on a red auto probably isn't going to happen if it's uh you know if it's if it's you know we're well into this you know October and he's you know in the minors probably going to be more like a you know fifteen hundred dollar auto or something or even lower. And then you'll have people that are hyped and are going to try to prospect on him again. But yeah, I think he has a long, a long period of time because of his age and because of his lineage and because of the pure amount of people trying to buy him. I mean, I, I don't think that, that that that'll subside a little bit, but it's such a big, big, big demographic trying to get a piece of this guy, and that's why these prices are so crazy. Uh, Kidwell asked in the chat before we move on to the next topic, what happens to Otani's value if he's a so-so hitter but a true ace this year? Um, I think it affects it a little bit. Everybody wants to see the long ball. Very few pitchers uh, sell well. I mean, we had Strasburg. I think the best-selling pitcher right now who's active is Kershaw. Um, but pitchers really have a, a in-the-moment type of uh, – if they have a no-hitter, then they're going to get a spike for a week. But pitchers just – I don't know. They just – in this hobby, it's all about the power, the power hitters or the champions and I think stuff like that. I, I think it's – with Otani specifically, it's just a completely different ball game. Um, yeah. He – because he can hit, he can only be hitting ten homers and be an ace, and that will drive the market up. Yeah, uh, just based on the fact that he's hitting and hitting ten home runs. I mean, how many home runs do you think he has? It sounds like he's going to be a DH pitcher, is what it what it kind of sounds like, is what we're looking at. Yeah, how many home runs at the All Star break do you think he's going to have? Um, five. Okay, yeah, I think he's going to have more than that. No. The I, balls are juice, dude. Uh, I think I can hit five home runs. We'll see. I mean, it depends on how many at bats he's going to get. You can't think he's going to. So, he's so not going to. He's not going to be a DH every game if he's pitched every so five days. So I'm at the so. batting cage. I'm working on my stroke. <laughs> we got to get that video up. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the last. We're running out of time, and I think uh, we've got Contenders Optic that's probably pretty much ready to go. Supreme Hardcourt. Open it up. Which we have some in our possession that we actually bought on eBay for eight hundred dollars. Um, it's been kind of a crazy thing. They're, we talked about it when they when they released the information at the Upper Deck Conference, and then Upper Deck kind of slyly released this on their website, um, and uh, not many people heard about it. I started seeing breaks. I'm like, wait, it's out. I'm like, so it didn't get solicited to anybody. Uh, we heard about that if you bought $5,000 in UDA stuff, basketball stuff, then you would be offered a box, like 200 bucks. Uh, but we didn't have any UDA stuff in our shop, and we didn't want to pay $5,000, so... We, we didn't really get any. Um, nobody was really telling us from Upper Deck how to get it. Uh, there's rumors that there's been uh, basically there. This is allegedly that uh, Panini's not a big fan. That they're getting around the license. So for those of you that don't know about this product, this is basically an NBA licensed product, but it's a five by seven game used floorboard uh, from the Charlotte Bobcats stadium from X amount of years. I think it's like 2000, whatever to 2000 because Michael Jordan owns the Bobcats and he, 
uh, has a, a piece of, 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 of upper deck, so he provided him with the floor. So you have, and it's considered a 1617 product, so you're going to have Ben Simmons patch autos. This is up on eBay as, uh, for 9000 Somebody took an offer on $9,000 for this basically autographed memorabilia oversized card. Uh, there's LeBron James autos in there in a Cavs uni. There's Michael Jordan autos in there on a Bulls uni. And you basically get two cards, two floorboards in each box. So, and there's also logo mans and things like that. So it's a crazy, crazy thing. So, um, but I don't know how they're. Yeah, it says memorabilia right on the box, a sticker. Doesn't say anything about cards. It's like memorabilia. game used court pieces, and that's how they're getting around the uh, the issue of the license because you know it's not they, a card product. You know what they could do though, because you know it's going to be a pain in the ass trying to find sleeves and top loaders for these tight fools. They could have top loaded them. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Damn it. Yeah, we are going to be breaking it. Uh, we're going to probably do some kind of break with select with it. Um, not all three because that'd be too expensive, but we're going to probably do like three different bigger mixers with it. Um, and uh, yeah, so you get a chance at getting a uh, LeBron James or, uh, you know, Simmons or Curry's in there. So you got a lot of nice stuff. Very unique. Whoa. And uh, so it'll be fun. It'll uh, definitely be fun. I think. The uh, next picture I have is uh, one of the LeBron James ones out of the set, too, that somebody's trying to get $25,000 for. So it's a number to 23, game use, Cavaliers yeah. Uni. His auto change. LeBron James. Yeah, it looks like just two circles, doesn't it? So not posted yet, Ziggy. I might do something either Friday night or for sure by Saturday night. So look on the site, mojobreak.com, for a break that uh, is going to include uh, at least one box of Supreme Court, um, 1617, Upper Deck. Carlsbad, California, El Camino Real. Really want to open it up right now. I do. I do, too. I really want to I want to see it. Everybody's like, do it, do it, do it. Well, we don't have a whole lot of time for the Q&A, but I wanted you guys to sit on this and see what you think. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth next week about this Supreme Hard Court because it's fascinating the fact that somebody can put out a basically a, uh, a mystery box kind of card item without having a license. So what could this do to open up the doors even more for Upper Deck? Can they make card-sized jersey pieces and say it's memorabilia. I mean, what can they do now? It's a it's a big loophole um, that uh, could create some stuff. So, uh, But anyways, uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. We've got Contenders and Optic, uh, Contenders Optic coming up. Uh, we have uh, limited spots available. It's been hot, so the stuff's been uh, basically selling out. But uh, there's limited spots available, and we also have Select Basketball, um, that's going to be breaking on Friday. Brand new release of Select Basketball, which looks really, really nice. So get your teams on that. We have randoms. We have random groups. We have tiered of that. So mojobreak.com is the website. I'd like to thank Eric once again for coming on the show from Hall of Fame Baseball Cards in Arcadia at hofbc.com. And uh, we're out for the show. Peace out, guys.